My name is uh, Luc Edu. I'm the president and co-founder of Enspro. Hi, my name is Marie Leclerc. I'm the practice director for the business consulting activities at Enspro. Annie Gerard, full-time lecturer here at HEC Montréal. Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm a consular. I'm from Uber Eats and I work in the extension team. You can start. As a professional, I work in many different types of environments. One being very traditional paper, documents, you're not sure where you put that paper you needed to fax, frankly, unorganized. To the other type of environment, being very digital, everything's in the cloud, efficient, and organized. Working in these different types of environments made me realize how important it is to be efficient in the workplace. Good afternoon, board of directors. Je me présente Chelsea, et je suis ici avec Matt et Ben, et nous sommes Empowered Marketing. Today, we are going to bring you through a strategy to help you rise up to be number one in your workplace. We're first going to go through the challenge and mandate you presented us today, bringing in some of our strategy, some analysis, how we're going to implement the strategy, the financials, and the risk that we have to take to get there. Our challenge today brought to you by you is how to brand and spro without jeopardizing customer relationships and brand recognition affected with other brands. Our mandate is to successfully brand Enspro without jeopardizing customer relationships and brand recognition. Our strategy today that we're going to walk you through is first to grow internationally while branding a merger under one brand. We're going to do this by rebranding you to RZNG. We're going to expand to international markets and we're going to create and retain uh, customer relationships while doing so. We got to the strategy using consumer analysis. We broke the consumer segments into three different segments. The first is the traditional turtles. The second, partial penguins. And three, efficient eagles. So they're all looking for different things. First, we came with, do they have SAP, SAP? The traditional turtles, no. The partial penguins have some, they're getting there, and the efficient eagles are always a, already have it, and they're the efficient workplace. Secondly, we have potential for growth opportunities. The traditional turtles that are, like Chelsea said, working stacks of papers beside them, faxing everything. They don't, that is a very high growth opportunity for you as a company. The partial penguins, medium, because they do have some implemented, and then the efficient eagles are as low because they already have all that they need. Lastly, would they benefit from SAP, additional SAP? The traditional turtles, yes, and the partial penguins, yes. Through this cons consumer analysis, we have eliminated the efficient eagles because you've already targeted them. They're already partnered with you, and we want to do a couple key takeaways. The potential growth opportunities for those traditional turtles, for those workforces that are looking to become more efficient, not have to search time and time for documents, getting lost in the pa paper piles. And secondly, for the partial penguins, that the beneficial, that they already have, say, the human resources side of the SAP, and they could get the finance side and really partnered up to make the company even more efficient. To take these consumers through the journey, we're going to go through our map. First, how are they going to find out about us? They're going to come to the realization that their company isn't being efficient and they could be therefore more efficient with the use, with the use of our, our GNZ. We're then going to analyze the work environment. How can we improve this? How can we be more organized and how can we be number one? 
Then we're going to research ways to increase this efficiency. They're going to research their options um, via online, word to mouth, networking, and that's when they're going to realize that you are the number one pick and to choose our ZNT. We've taken a look at where you stand in the consumer side of things. Now we're going to take a look at your internal and external strengths and weaknesses. Of course, internal, you have that product variety. It will offer a lot of products that will really interest, of course, these uh, traditional turtles that really need to get that SAP implemented in their systems. Of course, you ranked fifth out of 120 in 2014. That's a big number to put on your name, of course, for implementing these SAPs. <coughs> companies that are really unsure if they should go towards this route. They know that they have a trusted brand name. And finally, customer relationships. You develop great customer relationships and they trust you. Every customer that you win with, of course, loves you. That's why you're ranked fifth out of 120 people. Now, negative is because you've acquired different companies in the past, of course, as uh, your mandate laid out today, so you wanted to rebrand it a little bit, it might come with some difficulties to try to rebrand re re it because people are finding different ways and they don't really know what your brand stands. Now, looking at your external, you have so many opportunities for growth, especially at these traditional turtles that we spoke about, because there's so many companies out there that really are behind the eight ball, as you would say it, and really they don't have any new SAP implemented, and really that's where you target them. Of course, revenue distribution is skewed, which we definitely saw that in the graph that you laid out, that a lot of the revenue is actually in the USA, which Canada is starting to fall behind on that, especially in 2018. Now, negative side, of course, you have many strong competitors, there's so many great uh, SAP units out there, of course, you're trying to become the best and rebrand yourself to position to be number one. Of course, fast-paced tech world. The uh, technology is changing every single day, and of course, you have to adapt. So that means that every single time that there's something new and something new and innovative in SAP, you will need to implement it, of course, to adapt. Through this analysis, we've come up with two major opportunities for you to grow as a company and really rise to the top of your industry. The first one is to grow internationally, really break overseas and make some connections there. Second, target the traditional internal and the partial pe penguins and make sure that they, you're able to rise them to the top of their sector. And lastly, use the rebrand to avoid confusions between all the different brands under your umbrella. As I mentioned before, a strategy, as the boys take you through our tactics, I really want to make sure that you keep in mind that we're growing internationally with the merger being under one brand of RZMG. We also want to expand to international markets and create and maintain consumer relationships. Of course, as Chelsea mentioned, the boys will take you through the key tactics for success. So Ben and I will go through these four tactics that we laid out that we find that are really important for the success of your company. Now the RZNG, uh, early brand release, so what we're doing is a teaser because we want people to really get involved with this RZNG. So now the brand tease, what we're doing is the next level SAP is coming. Are you ready? Now what this is going to be is promotional material all over the world, especially in these new markets that you want to obtain. And of course it's going to be paper and digital. And what this is going to be is the tease will go on for a month. It just simply on billboard ads on digital social media, asking people if they're ready for the next innovation SAP. Simple as that. They have no idea what's coming, but they can sit some assumptions. However, they're not sure until the month actually comes. Finally, the tease will go on for a month, as I said, and then you'll release your brand, your logo, and of course, the RZNG. And finally, redesign logo and website. So that's a big thing, of course, as you're going under a new brand, you're going to name a new logo and a redesigned website, which, of course, is going to be a part that we want to implement for you, is that redesigned logo, of course, the website. Second, what we have is the RZNG Inventational. Since we are trying to target more of the European, the European markets and the North American markets, we talked to ourselves and we're like, where do business people like to hang out? What do they enjoy? And we thought, why not a golf tournament? It's a great way to interact with the European side, so the golf tournament will be sponsored, and it will be hosted <coughs> in Europe, say England or Ireland, on one of those really established golf courses, where we can bring all these golfers in, and it gets televised worldwide, and your new brand can really stand out amongst the other ones. For example, like the Bridgestone Invitational. There's so many different golf tournaments that really showcase your different brands, and we believe this can really help with the rebuild of the brand, and really, make connections with those European 
customers and that they can see what you guys are doing as a company. Next, we are going to be working with trade shows. You are currently going to trade shows, meeting with customers, um, keeping up relations with uh, past customers, but we believe this is very important, especially with the traditional turtles and the partial penguins, because traditional turtles, they're the ones that are going to these trade shows, trying to see what's new, um, because they're not really online as much. They're just really focusing on meeting face to face and really get to see the faces <coughs> behind the business. So we believe this is very important and present how the SAP can really improve their business. So they can give you an example and you can show them what side of the business can be able to help them the best. And lastly, you're just gonna be able to maintain those relationships and really reach out to the European and internet and uh, North American customers to really help them rise to the top of their sector. Now the final key tactic for success is business magazines and of course uh, different promotional material related with these business magazines. Now an ad campaign, this is going to run inside your typical business magazine, your Forbes, etc. What this is, is in goal for people to really discover what your new brand is about. And of course as I spoke earlier about this promotional material, this tease for the new RZNG brand, that will be in those banners, of course, in those ads, and moving forward, of course, as I said, teaser, the press release, so this is going to be a, or sorry, the post release will be a two-page ad. Now picture this, this is where your ad comes in place, we'll go on that in the next page, of course. Your testimonials, of course, <coughs> who else, uh, who's your main people who are enjoying your product, of course, people such as big names that you've partnered with before that really represent and they showcase why your brand is amazing. Some small words that really pump up and feel people that they're confident when they're selecting you as their SAP provider. Now, I spoke about earlier, the picture of this moment. Now, this is our, your magazine ad that we want to run. So it's two pages in a magazine. Of course, I spoke about business magazines, etc. One where businessmen or women might read. So this is you without SAP and this is you with SAP. So this is what it's going to be. There's going to be one page where there's a man <coughs> sitting down simply on his desk. And there's papers everywhere, there's clutter everywhere. He has a snorkel on and the snorkel is going above the paper. So this is you without SCP because you're cluttered with paper, you don't know what you're doing, it's, it, there's too much clutter going on. This is you with SAP is the same guy who has implemented, of course, your RCMG uh, SAP system and now he's sitting comfortably on his desk and doesn't need a snorkel now anymore. Of course, uh, and then he's sitting comfortably at his desk and of course that shows the difference between your one side of not having SAP and the complete difference from having SAP. So really, for those traditional turtles as we spoke about before, who are pretty much on that paper side where they're struggling with so much paper they can't even breathe, that's where the SAP comes in and saves their lives. Now, moving on to our digital stuff. This is, you don't want this. Now, after I'm saying you don't want this, what do I mean? Well, we're gonna run a few campaigns, of course, uh, not too cost heavy because you're going to be on YouTube and then launch with Facebook and Instagram trying to be more on the social side of things. But it's a, a campaign that it's really something that you would not want to be a part of because you don't have SAP. So for example, as I can take the earlier, uh, the person who's sitting down at his desk with a snorkel, you don't want that. Well, for the video examples as we wanted to do, we want to do someone who's about to walk into his office and he gets on his scuba gear on. And he tries to walk in and he's like, oh my god, this is what I have to go through every day. You don't want this. Of course, keep on going. There's someone where there's an HR possibility and there's actually a liability happening where there is a customer that is really not doing something very HR friendly and they want to send something in, of course, as a report. However, the report is this tall. And then the person really looks at it and says, well, do I really want to do all this? Is it really worth it? That's where SAP comes in again. So of course, after the commercial is done, the small little ad of around 10 to 30 seconds is done, your logo, visit your logo of your website, of course, that is going to be brand new and rebranded, and that'll bring you on to really what you're all about. And to recap the tactics we're gonna be used to rise not only you guys, but your partners to success <coughs> is with the rebrand to uh, RZNG and really Tease it. Secondly, the RZNG Invitational. <coughs> Continue with your trade shows. And lastly, the business magazines. And now Chelsea's going to take you through the implementation of this.
how are we going to take this all together? I've divided our strategy into a four-phase implementation. The first phase will be the first six months of our strategy. This is where we're going to rebrand your company to RZNG. We're going to recreate your logo. We're going to rebuild your website, making sure that there is a blog that is mobile friendly and user friendly. Next, we're going to work on our trade shows, um, doing partnerships with those that we want to be in, as well as attending them. And we're going to start the creation of our ad campaign. This is where we want to be really creative and consistent with our branding to make sure that you are very recognizable and the awareness is going up. Our next phase is six to 12 months. This is where we're going to start the organization of our international, finding a location, our sponsors, our attendees, and all the logistics. We're then going to just distribute the ads via digital and print. Our next phase will be the next 12 months. This is where we're going to host the Invitational, um, of course, having a big success. And we're going to post <coughs> testimonials of your company, of how people are loving it, how it's easy, friendly, and really um, recognizable, and increase that brand awareness. Lastly, after those two years, we are going to revaluate our marketing strategy, as well as the trends. We are always changing in, in marketing, and it is key to remain competitive by constantly be, be changing our strategy and remaining with trends. All right, now to get down to where this is all going to cost, because we spoke about a lot of tactics so far. We looked at spending around $7.6 million on all these expenses, with the main one being a golf course, because you know it's or the golf tournament, because it's not that cheap to run a golf event. We're not trying to make you host the Masters here. We're trying to make something big, something where uh, new clients, and of course, previous clients want to attend, and of course, professionals in Europe. Uh, most of that $5 million is considered in the prize pool for these big European golfers, and of course, some Americans that might want to come over, but this is really centered towards that European expansion digital campaign, $1.5 million, and of course we go down the list and it gets a little cheaper, and the website revamp is not the most expensive thing, so we're at $7.6 million. Now, how are we going to make some money from that? Well, we looked at where your growth is. Right now you're averaging about <coughs> $9 million a year with about a 20% growth per year. So what we decided to do, we decided to say, in, pro in year one and of course the years of after that, we can see, instead of a 20% average growth, we can probably get that growth to 30% in year one. Now based off that is the new revenues that we're going to acquire from that increase, that 10% increase. The market expenses that were laid out earlier at $7.6 million. So now we're left with a net profit of 1.4 million, which is an ROI of 18%. Now 18% uh, is, seems a pretty average ROI, it's a pretty optimistic look. And we feel that it's actually very obtainable because since you're averaging about 20% growth per year, going up to 30% in one year is actually a very obtainable number. And we feel that with our strategy, that's really something that you can strive for. And with any strategy, there are some risks tied with it. And we've laid out two risks that have potential impacts on the strategy that we're proposing to you today. The first one being RZNG has slow growth in the international market. We have the likelihood of this happening is medium and the impact medium, and we would mitigate this by increasing our advertising expenditures in those target areas. So it can really, the brand name can really grow with the added um, marketing ex expenses. And secondly, our, the name uh, results in a loss of brand recognition. Since you guys already have such a strong brand name, there is a possibility that the change to RZNG loses some of your old customers because they get a little bit confused. So we have the likelihood of, likelihood of this happening being medium and the impact low because we're going to mitigate this by keeping constant, in con constant contact with your, already, your partners that you already have right now and making sure they know exactly what's happening and they're up to date with everything and they really feel like they're part of the transfer as well. And your new customers, it won't be impacting them at all because they're going to be uh, coming to you as our ZNG. Now, we were able to grow you internationally while branding a merger into one brand, our ZNG. We expanded you to international markets and we showed you how we are going to create a customer relationship worthwhile. All this together, we are going to tie in how people won't even believe that I used to work with a bunch of papers and very unorganized, not knowing what, what was going on. So 
Here today, we rose you up to being number one in uh, the competitive market. Thank you. All right, quick questions. What entities are you looking to rebrand? What your your strategy around R Z and G? Yes. So, what companies are you focusing on with that rebranding? Is it all the entities? Is it AC? Yeah, because I understand that in the case was laid out that you wanted us to rebrand the merger of AC and of course uh, Enspro. And of course, that together, I know, uh, rising aboard, of course, and that would, together would make RZ and G. So it's the three. Okay, so what about Enspro Retail? What about Vesta? Well, in the, in the case that was laid out, there was no really rebranding of those types. It was only rebranding of the three. So okay. We would tie it up as <coughs> one umbrella, making the brand recognizable for our TNZ, that, that there's no confusion between which one for your customers. And how do you plan to include new acquisitions in different countries or different parts of the world? Yeah, so for the acquisitions, we would still have them under an RZNG logo, like if, like that we, like Enspro would be after the rebrand. So it would just be RZNG, and then they'd be under our under that umbrella corporation. So the other companies operate as, uh, for example, Vesta is a rising company. Uh, would they would they then become uh, our Vesta is an RZNG company? Is that what, what the intent would be? Yes. You're re if you're rebranding all the way up to rising to RZNG. Yes, we yes. want everything to be under one umbrella, um, distributed across all boards, so it's very recognizable for each and every one. RZNG with the summer. So what would be the name of AC then? That would be RZNG. It would go under that one. With the merger of Enspro. Uh, okay, and what about Enspro? Enspro HTM. Will also go under RZNG. Okay. All right. Why do you feel the need of rebranding rising and changing it for RZNG? What's the yeah. What's the, the reason behind it? The motivation. So we decided to have a rebrand because you guys do have so many different different sectors like you mentioned earlier and people were getting a little bit confused so we wanted to have a fresh look on it and have that umbrella so RZNG instead of saying Enspro, a rising company is just RZNG and then and under that you can put Enspro instead. So that's why we want to do a rebrand so people don't get confused when they see like say Deloitte they all know Deloitte has a different sub brands, but RZ and G, we really want that, and then uh, they'll be able to recognize that name. Um, so, based on the fact that you're going to change uh, all brands to RZ and G, so you're going to tackle to a lot of current clients to the company. Do you think that with the current layout of your strategy, I'm looking at your financials here, will it be, I'm guessing you're going to say yes, but will it be enough um, just to, to make sure that the, the brand equity is relevant for our current customers? Because they used to know Vista, they used to know Rising, they used to know Enspro, they used to know AC, uh, Acme. So. How do you manage that? Well, we believe that the one thing, of course, that's not going to change is your product. Whatever you're releasing is not changing. The really the simple thing that's changing is the name brand. Now, that will be communicated, as I have said, more in the financials and the tactics that the marketing strategies, of course, there's be sent emails to previous users. So we believe that since your product is, is superior to the others, that they'll stay with your product as long as your name doesn't it could change from whatever it wants. But as long as you keep that product, it will remain with you. But we're going to lose brand equity for sure, don't you think? For like the outside public, you mean? Yeah, but, yeah, but even even with the current customers, it's it's a new, it's basically a new brand they're dealing with. I, I yeah. totally get yeah. your point that it's the product won't change. Yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> yes, yes, there is a little it's like it's like loss in brand equity. I yeah. agree with that, hundred uh, percent. The one thing I would do, that, well, not do actually. The one thing I I would think is that for the brand equity, of course. Changing a brand does change it a lot and impacts the brand equity. Now, in saying that though, 
with the change and of course your product being the same thing, uh, the brand equity would overall remain the same. Like it wouldn't change too much. I don't think it has too much impact based off of uh, the people changing. Of course, I, of course, it'll change a little bit, but not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.